Hi everyone, welcome to the next Earth Science Review video. This is going to be video number 28 in the series, and I'm going to try to keep this as concise as I can and give you as much information in as little time as possible. So without further ado, today we are talking about rivers and glaciers, as you can see. So we'll do rivers first, we'll do glaciers second, and then we'll do a couple of practice questions as examples. So here we go. So a couple of things to know about rivers. The first thing is the velocity. Velocity means speed. And if you see the word stream discharge, like you see on here, stream discharge means the amount of water moving through the stream. So this relationship says as the stream discharge increases, meaning as there's more water, the water will travel faster. The second relationship to know is that if you increase slope, meaning you make it steeper, like here would be gentle and here would be steep. So steeper makes the water flow faster. And the third thing is if the water is flowing faster, that means that it can move bigger particles. So the bigger the particle, that is being moved generally the faster the stream. For example, a slow stream probably can't move a boulder. This is a particle size chart that you should be able to read. It shows stream velocity on the bottom and it compares different size particles with the speed needed to move it. So for example, a velocity of 50 here, if you go up 50 and you go up until it hits this black line here, you could see you're in the pebbles category. So that means a stream velocity of 50 centimeters per second is able to move pebbles, and it's also able to move anything lighter than pebbles. So it can also move sand, silt, and clay. It cannot move a cobble, and it cannot move a boulder. Rivers always flow from high elevation to low elevation downhill. Things know about how a river develops. Three stages of a river. The first one is a youthful valley. This is a young river. Generally, it's going to be really fast. It's going to be at a uh, on a steeper slope and it's going to be really, really strong. It's going to be able to move big particles, and you can see it's carving this V-shaped valley here. And the way I remember V-shaped valley in rivers is the word river has a V in it, so you can remember it carves V-shaped valleys. Now, as the river progresses in age, it's going to become less steep. You can see it flattens out. It's got these rivers that go into the main river right here. These are called tributaries, and you can see all this area on the side. This is all called floodplain. Now, as it gets older, it's going to get weaker, so it's going to go slower, and it's going to start dropping off a lot more particles because it's not as strong. It's not able to move them, so it drops them off. Now, when it's really old, it's going to be very, very slow. It'll be really flat, and it's going to be dropping off pretty much most of its material. It's pretty much not going to be eroding that much anymore. Here's some examples of an old river. You could see these things over here. These are called oxbow lakes. They are a meander, which is a curve that was cut off. So that takes a really long time to happen. So if you see those, you're going to be talking about an old river. Now, the most important part of rivers, is my, in my opinion, is to know that it's the water travels fastest on the outside of the curve. So in this side view, you're going to see this is the outside of the curve. And this area here is generally deeper then the area on the inside, which as you can see, this is less deep, right? This is where you're gonna have all your deposition and this side will have your erosion. So water on the inside goes slow, so it drops off the stuff on the inside and it carves away stuff on the outside. Now you're gonna to have to know the side views of all these three spots. So I think I have a, yeah, this is a, this is a good picture here. So from A, A is on the outside, so it's erosion, so it's deeper here. And then this area here is shallower because that's the deposition, so it sort of makes like a Nike swoosh symbol. B to B prime is an example of a cross section that is not on a curve, so generally it's like a smiley face. It's generally even on both sides. And then C to C prime right here is going to be the opposite of A to A prime, as you can see the, the erosions on the left. So that steep side of this, this, this river channel is going to be on the left. And the depositions on the right, so the shallower side will be on the right. So like here's an example of a question. So like what I would do here is I'd be like, okay, like you see this Nike swoosh symbol here? The steep side or the deeper side is on the right, so I know this has to be erosion. This side's flatter in general, so this has to be deposition, which happens on the inside. So you need to pick the picture that has X on the inside and Y on the outside, which is going to be D. 
just to go back, I just want to show you something real quick. So X to Y is not on a curve. So the stream profile would look like that. This one here on A, X to Y is also not on a curve. So it would also look like that. This one has X on the outside. So you're going to have the steep area on the outside and Y would have the gentle area. So it's like the opposite of what you're seeing here. All right, a couple things that happen, really only one major thing, when a river dumps into an ocean or a bigger river, right here, this is called the mouth, it sorts the sediment by size. So you have the boulders being dropped off first, then the cobbles, then the pebbles, then the silt and the sand and the, the sand, silt and clay. Uh, this forms a delta, which is a triangular shaped uh, structure, a depositional structure, and it sorts. All right, on to glaciers. So there's really only like two major things you gotta know about glaciers. The first one is they create U-shaped valleys as they move through uh, canyons. They have generally unsorted sediment that are very angular, it's all, all randomized. Rivers are really sorting mechanisms. They sort by size, glaciers do not. As glaciers move across rocks, they, call, they cause striations, which are parallel scratch marks that you could sort of see in this picture. It polishes and smooths the rock. A couple things when glaciers move through, they deposit these things called moraines. It's just a dump of material. Uh, depending on where they are in the valley, they have a different name. So medial moraines is if it dumps it in the middle of the valley. Then you got lateral moraines if it deposits it on the sides of the valley and an end moraine if it deposited at the end of the glacier. The thing to know about moraine is that it's unsorted material that the glacier drops off. That's important. You could see this is happening here. Here's your medial moraine and your lateral moraines, right? Now, here's the major thing to know about glaciers. The moraines are unsorted, but another depositional feature of a glacier is an outwash plane. This area here. An outwash plane is when the glacier melts at the end, melting caused the glacier to recede back up the mountain. As it melts, it all turns into water, right? And we know water actually sorts. So in terms of a glacial depositional features, the outwash plane has sorted material and the moraines have unsorted material. Drumlins are a depositional feature caused by a glacier. The only thing you have to know that it's shaped like a teardrop like this. And the pointy part of the teardrop indicates the direction the glacier was moving. So this glacier was moving this way. Some pictures of drumlins so you could see like the teardrop. So that would be moving east. And here's your outwash plane. That's that what I was talking about, the sorted sediment at the end of a glacier. Another feature of a glacier is these things called kettle lakes. It's a giant block of ice that sinks into the ground and then it melts and it makes a little lake. Like these. And the last thing about glaciers is that the Finger Lakes, which are in New York State and around the Syracuse area, they were carved by glaciers. Just a little fun fact. All right, we're on to our practice questions today. So if you would like, pause the video, try to answer the question, and then I'll go over how it's done, all right? So here we go. It says at which two locations would the stream most likely be the deepest? So for deepest, we want a lot of erosion, which means we want it to go fast, which means we want to locate areas that are on the outsides of the curves. So D and A are going to be the winner there. And I just want to draw a profile for D, C to D and A to B just to show you. So D to C, since this is on the outside, your river channel is going to look like this. And from A to B, it's the opposite. The outside's the deeper part. So it would be looking like that. If I were to draw a line here, that would be not on a curve. So you would get an even amount of deposition and erosion like that. Next question. We got a block diagram. It says a stream's flowing from a mountain region. A brief rainstorm occurs in the mountains. How will the volume of water and rate of erosion in the stream change shortly after the rainstorm? Okay, first of all, storms are heavy rain, right? So it's going to increase stream discharge. Remember, stream discharge is the amount of water. So if you're making more water, you're going to increase the speed. If you increase the speed, you're going to be able to move more. 
if you can move more, that means more erosion is happening. So there's your relationships. So the volume of water will increase and the rate of erosion will not decrease. We don't want that. Uh, so it's D. Both the volume and rate of erosion will go up. Number three, a moraine in a glacier is ba best described as what? All right, we talked about this. Moraines are unsorted piles of sediment. Uh, I just want to show you, B says sorted sediment deposited as the glacier melt. That's referring to the outwash plane. A body of water formed by a retreating glacier, also that's part of the outwash plane. And an elongated hill, this is referring to those drumlins. An elongated hill is the vocab way of them saying this teardrop structure. Number four, a photograph below shows a valley glacier altering the landscape. The result would be what? Okay, glaciers are always unsorted, except for the outwash plain, but they're saying the glacier itself, and they carve U-shaped valleys, with grooved bedrock being the striations. So definitely not well sorted and rounded. And V-shape is only for rivers, so your answer is A. Couple more. Cross sections show a glacial feature. Which feature is this? Okay, this is gonna be a kettle lake. A drumlin, remember, is the teardrop. The finger lakes are these lakes in New York. They look like this. And the parallel scratches are just the striations along the rock. So none of those are right. Number six, this is a short answer question. So pause, write your answer. Describe one difference between the arrangement of sediment in a moraine and the arrangement of sediments in an outwash plain. Moraine sediment is unsorted, outwash plain, sorted. That's what it means by arrangement. You could say it, it sorts from large to small as well. That's fine. All right, two more. Describe how the size and shape of most pebbles change when the pebbles are transported in a stream over a great distance. So this has to do with the sugar cube lab. I don't know if you've ever done that. So the sugar cube lab, you got cubes and they roll around and they break off the edges, which turn them circular over time. So that's what happens with the rivers when the particles are dragged along the bottom. This is called abrasion. So the answer here is it rounds, smooths, and makes them smaller. So really smooths is like a texture so they really asked for the size and shape, so you'd have to say round and smaller. All right, last one. Major difference between sediments in the outwash and sediments in the moraine is that sediments deposited in the outwash are, outwash should be sorted, remember, because it's made from water. The moraine is just unsorted deposits. All right, well that was rivers and glaciers in a nutshell. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Bye.